The beginning of the world is grief, and its end is destruction. This sentence contains the same truth which the Holy Quran has presented in verse, saying, Indeed, we have created man to dwell amid hardship. It is true that right from the narrow womb of the mother and onto the vastness of the firmament, the changes of human life do not come to an end. When man first takes life, he finds himself closed in such a dark prison where he can neither move the limbs nor change the sight. When he gets rid of this confinement and steps into the world, he has to pass through innumerable troubles. In the beginning, he can neither speak with a tongue so as to describe his difficulty or pain, nor does he possess the energy in the limb so as to accomplish his needs himself. Only his suppressed sobs and flowing tears express his needs and translate his grief and sorrow. When after the lapse of this period, he enters the stage of learning and instruction, then on every step, voices of admonition and abuse welcome him. All the time he seems frightened and terrified. When he is relieved of this period of subjugation, he finds himself surrounded by the worries of family life and livelihood, where sometimes there is the clash of comrades and profession, sometimes collision with enemies, sometimes confrontations with vicissitudes of time, sometimes attack of ailments and sometimes the shock of children. Then old age approaches him with the tidings of helplessness and weakness and eventually he bids farewell to this world with mortification and grief in the heart. Within its lawful actions there is the question of reckoning and in its forbidden acts there are hardships and punishments as a result of which even pleasant joys also produce bitterness in his palate. If there is plenty of wealth and money in this world, then man can find himself in such a whirlpool of worries that he loses his joy and peace of mind. But if there is want and poverty, he is ever crying for wealth. For he who hankers after this world, there is no limit to his desires. If one wish is fulfilled, the desire for fulfillment of another wish crops up. This world is like a reflection. If you run after it, then it will itself run forward. But if you leave it and run away from it, then it follows you. In the same way, if a person does not run after the world, the world runs after him. The implication is that if a person breaks the clutches of greed and avarice and keeps aloof from undesirable hankering after the world, he too gets pleasure of the world and he does not remain deprived of it. Therefore, he who surveys this world from above its surface and takes lesson from its changes and happenings and through its variation and alterations gains knowledge about Allah's might, wisdom, mercy, clemency, and sustaining power, his eyes will gain real brightness and sight. On the other hand, the person who is lost only in the colorfulness of the world and his decorations loses himself in the darkness of the world. Nahjul Balawi, which translates as The Way of Eloquence by Imam Ali. Huh? Who's that? You atheist. Hey, hey, but... we're recording. <clears throat> right, right, well. Imam Ali was the first cousin and son-in-law of the Holy Prophet. And the Nahjul Balawi, which translates as The Way of Eloquence, is the collection of sermons, letters and narrations given by him. So what was this? This was a sermon. Sermon number 81, to be exact. You can see how he points to the very Buddhist notion that desire is never ending. That if you chase one thing, another thing will eventually pop up. However, he also notes that in the same way, if a person does not run after the world, 
then the world will inevitably run after him. Mm. There's no escape. Exactly. Well, kind of. The sermon starts with the mention of the Quran that says, Indeed, we have created man to dwell amid hardship. So, it's already admitting that life is a struggle. He says that he who surveys this world from above its surface and takes lesson from its changes and happenings and through its variations and alterations gains knowledge about Allah's might, he's essentially saying, don't get lost by what your eyes see, but don't close your eyes either.